that in standard regulations? Um, well, there are two perhaps uh, quick examples that I can briefly show out in a few moments. Um, what it's about, and I would like to quote a meeting that I had in Berlin a couple of months ago, and it was about the famous industry uh, Fiat Bundur 4.0, which is very uh, important, uh, especially in that country, it's very much pushed. Um, one of the things I appreciate very much in that meeting is that they talk about digitalization of the industry, uh, and they cover all different aspects. Let's say not just the, for my side at least, the most famous one, like digital printing, for its inkjet printing, or digital manufacturing, but also uh, communication along the supply chain, which is for us a very, very important point. Uh, so I think, first of all, it's important to see that when we talk about the impact of standards in digitalization of the industry, there are most famous areas of work and there are less famous areas of work, which might even be more critical for supply chain like ours, which is more than 170,000 uh, companies made of. Um, in that regards, <laughs> there are obviously not single solutions because we have that many companies involved. I think it's important to understand what are the priorities in different areas. That is not just one area to look at, but there are different. And in that regard, I think the most difficult thing is how to bring together the different initiatives on the standardization level, which takes place in different European countries. Specifically, when we have standardization initiatives which come up, <laughs> um, for instance, if you're speaking and you have I'll take responsibility for that. Of course, course. you get disrupted. That's the same thing. If you have different <laughs> standardization initiatives on similar topics, but which are coming up at the same time without knowing one or the other one, then it becomes very, very difficult to harmonize them at a later stage. So that's, that's one point that we'll start with. We're serious, though, we're European citizens. <laughs> um, we all have an energy trilemma to deal with, okay? And it's about this balance between, I guess, sustainability, affordability, and reliability. So when we look at the gaps in standardization, this is, this is what we need to think about. And for us in the energy industry, two main standard gaps are sticking out. And one is for smart meeting. Smart metering for electrical vehicles. Yeah, we think this is quite important. Um, and also, energy management harmonization um, or harmonized data models, so data hubs. Um, so smart metering for electric vehicles, and what's the second one? I, I suppose harmonized standards for data hubs. And for the data, hubs. data hubs. Yeah. Okay. And the idea here is that in different countries around Europe, we see data hubs being implemented and developed. And what we'd like to see as a leader standardized so that we don't have the issues of different data hubs trying to co coordinate or communicate with each other using different standards and creating issues in terms of cost and lack of efficiency. But we'd like to see something more effective. So we see that as a standardization gap, and um, I suppose from the energy industry, we'd definitely like to, uh, to move on it. Uh, in this respect, um the gaps um, that we have found in the standardization domain for the moment is uh, the, at the interfaces. So for us it's very important to have standard and interfaces and which are not technologically dependent but that they really allow for interconnection between uh, different sectors and also within the sector. And um, in that respect also semantic is important to have uh, same language and understanding each other and more specifically we have identified two uh, concrete topics uh, uh, upon which uh, we may suggest that some activities should be done. But before you even come to those, that, that's very interesting because I was sitting at a manufacturing table all day and two things that came out was interface standards and semantics. They seem to be common topics and maybe areas where we're where we as Senelec uh, perhaps can, we've always played that role of those, those linking standards and maybe it's a good role to play. So it's interesting, came in transport as well. But you have two specific examples. Yes, uh, which are um, focusing on data, big data and data exchange, data ownership. So data is a, is a big topic and linked to that is uh, cyber security. Well, I mean, standardization for me is a place where uh, the standards discussion is where there's a tension in the, in the IT industry between buy and innovation. So a lot of the conversations are happening in standardization, and you, you 
prefer it rather than a big topic. So we're dealing more and more with systems of systems where a you know, ever more protracted and connected world, a uh, highly, highly interdependent world. And we need to underpin all these uh, these new systems and new you know, service and product offerings. You need uh, systems where everybody interact with each other, interoperate with each other. Um, but the kind of things that, that when I look at uh, program and standardization, the kind of things I, I, I worry about, well, I think a lot about, uh, we've heard themes of security and trust and identity, but I think, I think trust is a big thing. And we've seen, like maybe last week in the UK, I mean, I think people need to trust, they need to know that their data, that I think people are increasingly concerned about that the devices know more about me than I know about me. You know? The, the psychologists call it the Johari window. It's like things that are unknown, unknown to self, but known to others. And they well, know known to self, known to others. Self, but known to others. So, you know, the machines know more about you and this big data may be being propagated in, in, a, in ways that outside users control. And I think, I think um, users will want to assert that as we move into a much more interconnected world where, you know, uh, and especially as we uh, buy more and more services, people, users will want to know that there's some kind of uh, a trusted framework underpinning the kind of data that's being exchanged. So I think digital trust uh, is a very big thing. Um, and I think um, one of the other, uh, I think, opportunities, because I think that we in the IT industry have to do a lot more to interact with key verticals. I think right right now it feels kind of siloed. Uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, a practical example that I've encountered is uh, in the healthcare sector, Windows embedded, driving a life support machine, the software becomes a, a medical device. So you have to comply with two different regulatory regimes. You have to um, understand uh, the boundary conditions where you might have different requirements of the vertical versus what the IT industry is saying. So, so I think there needs to be a lot more focus. We see some work in JDC1 on the area of IT governance and data governance. I think that's going to be a very big thing. And I think um, being able to facilitate a dialogue across boundaries between these key verticals on some of these big topics like security, like data governance, will, will eff effectively provide the, kind of the, the trust framework that, that citizens will, will need if they're going to buy into this great new world that we can talk about. I was going to just make some general comments. I heard at some point today that um, a very large part of the added value that will come in future from the ICT industry will be from traditional industries. It's the embedding of ICT into traditional areas now. Now that is an enormous business opportunity and basically almost every sector wants to have that added value. They want to be able to sell better products, newer products, um, things like smart watches or whatever else, but, but it, they want to be able to sell existing products like fridges, like home appliances that are more expensive because they have more functionality and they have this interconnectivity. Um, however, do the customers want it? Because at the end of the day, so much of this is going to be driven by what the customers want and what the customers are willing to pay for. So you have to have standards there that develop. We talked about digital trust. Um, the users have to be able to trust it. The users have to want to have that and want to be able to use it. They've got to have usability standards so that things are easy to use and they don't spend an hour every day learning how to, new, uh, uh, to, to use a new apparatus. So you do need standards on usability, you need standards on trust, you need certain standards on security, etc, etc. At the end of the day, you're actually trying to persuade the users to pay more money for better products. Right, so we're, we're, we're saying we're developing better products because the users want them, but actually at the end of the day, we're nearly trying to persuade the users to take them and the users are a little bit reluctant maybe because they haven't got that level of trust that we might want. There is a bit of both because new technology comes about. People see business opportunities there, but sometimes they actually have to persuade the users to, to make that extra step and pay that extra money. Yep.